oil and gas. Uh, we have a range of solid minerals that feature in our uh, export lists. Uh, but beyond that, both countries uh, have um, aspirant populations and we're looking to, both countries are looking to further diversify our economies. Uh, we've got young populations. So there's a lot there that uh, when you start to unpack it, you see where there's opportunities for learning. And you mentioned in your introduction, what can Nigeria learn from mm. Australia? Australia? And perhaps there are some things, but there's also things that we would like to see come back some learnings the other way. And it's certainly the way we view our bilateral relationship with Nigeria and indeed uh, all our bilateral relationships is what, what can we also learn? What, what can we exchange uh, as an equal partner in terms of knowledge, experience and the like? So that's how we, that's our starting point if you like. It's looking at the similarities and about how we can exchange for mutual benefit. Okay. How cordial is the tie right now, the diplomatic tie? Because uh, perhaps for some Nigerians, if you are talking of leaving Nigeria, for example, mm -hmm. Australia may not necessarily come to mind, perhaps because of the distance. <laughs> 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 how long does it take for, for it you takes to... A, it's a, we're a long way. I'm a long way from home. Yeah. Um, how long does it take? It like takes two days? Uh, flying time. You're probably sitting in an airplane, uh, not including stops for, you know, somewhere between 20 and 24 hours. hours. So it's a long way. Uh, there's no getting around that. But, uh, you know, I, I, what I always say is that distance does not diminish our friendship. Friendship, yeah. So Australia and Nigeria have a relationship uh, which goes right back, uh, a formal bilateral mm -hmm. relationship which goes back to independence. Yeah, and it's always been one that has been built on warm relations between individuals, between institutions, and you know, one that I think has enormous potential for growth and deepening because of, just because of the way that the 21st century is unfolding in a country like Nigeria, which is uh, looking to grow. Um, there's no doubt about Nigeria's growth trajectory. Uh, a country like Australia looking to engage with our uh, partners around the world. There's a natural synergy there ready to be taken further advantage of. Mm. So, in essence, the relationship between Nigeria and Australia is quite cordial? Uh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I think there's many ways you could describe it, but I always also il always illustrate it by saying that Australians visiting Nigeria, or in my case, living here for a few years, feel very much at home here and vice versa. So, there is something about the Australian-Nigerian vibe that means that uh, friendships are struck up easily. Uh, people are able to transact business very cordially. There is an easy way of, of working together and making relationships. That's been my experience. And certainly here in Nigeria, uh, the one thing you learn after living here is just how welcoming uh, Nigerians are. And particularly for, uh, for Australians, perhaps because they don't understand an enormous amount about uh, the country I come from, because it is far away and not, uh, it's not discussed often here. There's often more a focus on more immediate mm -hmm. neighbourhood in this hemisphere. Yeah. Uh, but once the conversation starts, it goes to good places. So uh, I'm very, very happy we, we have a good stream of uh, senior level visitors and delegations coming back and forth between Nigeria and Australia, including at high levels in government and in business and in academia. And some of those links are, are really strong, but um, I would describe there's, there's a lot of quiet achieving going on where, mm. where those, uh, those links are, and those businesses and those, those linkages are happening uh, without you know, a lot of fanfare. Mm. So what's the trade volume right now with Australia? Because the last time, the data that I have tells me about $350 million, I think as of last year. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it has increased <coughs> from that. It about 100 billion naira. What's the it, it trade like? It fluctuates yes, it fairly does. dramatically, yes. as, you've, as you would have known from your <laughs> research, from one year to the next, based on uh, the amount of uh, oil we might source from, from Nigeria um, as an import, which is, makes up the bulk of, of the, our uh, trade and investment uh, account. And, I mean, the last figures I saw, which were running at over uh, about 1.2, two billion dollars in two-way mm. trade which is significant um, and often Nigeria features as our second largest trading partner on the African country D depends from year to year mm. but behind South Africa which is oh. far and away uh, in front 
Um, there's a more steady stream of Australian imports coming back the other way in terms of uh, wheat and other food pro products that uh, fill particular niches in the Nigerian market uh, where that product isn't available uh, locally. So uh, it's there and it's substantial, but I think what everyone would agree is that there's plenty of room for growth. And that's what really excites me and interests me is what we can do to promote uh, further growth in that trade and investment relationship around, which dovetails with the Nigerian government's ambitions for greater diversification of the economy. So looking at where we can improve linkages in investment in uh, say, agribusiness, food technology, uh, transport, uh, urban development, uh, other things that Australia might have some niche expertise. The obvious one, of course, that I have not mentioned because it's really the elephant <laughs> is, the the, is our expertise in uh, mining yeah. uh, and I'll solid I'll minerals. Yes, I'll, I'll come to that in a bit. Okay. But I want to ask about the government's engagement mm. with, with you here yeah. as the High Commissioner. How has it been? Uh, because, like you said, we, we have a lot of similarities. We have a lot of mm. things in common. There are a lot of things we can also share, shared experiences. Uh, Nigeria is the largest economy in Africa, uh, largest markets with close to 200 million people. In fact, uh, the uh, Population Fund just said last week that, we, that we've hit about 201 million people. I know Australia is not up to that. Mm. It's like 10% of our mm -hmm. population. But there's still a lot more that we can learn. So how has the engagement been with government? Yeah. I, look, I have to say that my experience has been really positive and okay. uh, I'm, I'm really grateful for the reception that I've received. I, I can travel around the country visiting uh, the states and talking to state governors and <laughs> officials at the state level, but also here with federal ministers and federal officials in uh, Abuja. In fact, after this interview, I'm off to see uh, a permanent secretary. <laughs> Uh, for another engagement about a forthcoming mission uh, to Australia. Mm -hmm. So I find that um, that a access is, is not a particular problem because there, okay. is a, there is a real curiosity about Australia and what uh, a deepened bilateral relationship can offer. Mm. Now let's come back to uh, the mineral mm. resources development because mm. Australia is also heavy on mineral resources. In fact, one of your companies, BHP Billiton, isn't it? It's, it's huge. Mm -hmm. I think BHP Billiton is in South Africa and mm -hmm. all of that. We also do have a lot of solid minerals here. So how has the engagement been between Nigeria and Australia? Being that Australia is quite heavy mm -hmm. on mineral sector advancement or mineral sector growth, uh, our mining sector is still, we're still scratching the surface because we've not really harnessed that sector con to contribute largely to the GDP, which I think we can learn from Australia too. Yes, I would say, Nancy, that this is one of the areas where there's been quite a bit of quiet achieving going on. Um, perhaps uh, we, you'd call it preparatory work. Um, there is certainly some activity now in the mineral sector here in Nigeria, while at a small scale has the potential to grow quite considerably, which is Australian backed. Um, so it's Australian investment and expertise that's coming in to Nigeria to, to progress those uh, projects and, and potential projects. But also uh, there is a regular interchange of uh, officials and, and business people who are going back and forth between Australia and Nigeria. Every year we host a, a conference called Africa Down Under during Australia mm -hmm. Africa Week, which focuses on uh, the mineral sector, uh, not just for Nigeria, but for the whole continent. So it is uh, an area where I think you see the most activity. The Australian government has also been very proud to support uh, skills development in this area and in a number of other priority areas for, for the Nigerian economy so that uh, you know, we can both mutually benefit from uh, skills upgrading here. There's certainly no lack of talent in Nigeria, mm. everybody knows that, but sometimes there's, there's niche skills development that need, needs targeting and we, have been playing our role with that as well because ultimately what that benefits Nigeria then benefits uh, trading partners, for example. Mm. Uh, do, are we seeing an influx of Australian companies in Nigeria? Uh, is, there, you know, is there an attraction? 
Look, there's, Australian companies are always interested in where there is potential to obviously make money and Nigeria presents lots of possibilities and uh, potential, including in the mineral sector, but beyond. And I've seen uh, over the last few years particular interest in some sort of niche technology sectors and in, in the mining sector, obviously, in, in mining equipment and, and mining uh, consulting and other, other areas where it can play a, a role. Mm. So uh, that's, I think that's in train. And part of why I spend some of my time um, out and about talking with uh, officials and, and in the media is to raise awareness about uh, the, the role that Australia can play. So oftentimes there's a bit of an information deficit both in Australia and Nigeria, mm. perhaps because of the distance, distance that we talked about earlier. Mm. But once you start to become informed, then doors start to open in both countries. And that's what uh, you know, I see my role as very much uh, promoting. Talk to me about the Australia-Nigeria Trade Investment Council. Is it still there? Because I know it was set up a few years ago. Is yes. It, um, is it still there and how far? Look, it's, it's more operating on a basis of um, uh, individual companies mm -hmm. talking to individual uh, partners here in Nigeria. Uh, we'd like to see what we can do to uh, take that further um, in the future. But, um, you know, that will require uh, a bit more planning, I think. Uh, it's often that uh, you need a certain uh, threshold amount of uh, corporate interest and then you, know, you take that further. But certainly there's no, there's no impediment to the, to the communication exchange and uh, visits that are going on every, every week at the moment. Mm. Okay, let's quickly take a break and when we come back, uh, the concluding part of this interview, I still have Paul Lehman who is the Australian High Commissioner to Nigeria. I hope you've been watching and you've been taking one or two things. Perhaps after this interview, uh, you'll be planning of going to Australia. Uh, don't be dissuaded with almost 24 hours in the, sitting in the airplane, you know, we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Paul Lehman, the Australian High Commissioner to Nigeria, is still with me here in the studio. The first half of the program, uh, we said quite a lot of things. But in case you've missed that, you can uh, listen, you know, 
to the second half, which is also the concluding uh, part of it. So, uh, Your Excellency, do we know how many Australians are here in Nigeria? We? Um, we, we wouldn't have an exact number because that um, fluctuates from day to day, but it's not a large number um, for uh, some of the reasons that we touched on mm -hmm. earlier, yeah. including in distance and, and the like. But you will find that uh, there is uh, visits from uh, uh, Australians who have Nigerian backgrounds, they come oh. back visiting families, but also people who are visiting for business purposes, uh, academics and, and others. So there is there is, uh, there is uh, uh, a small community here uh, and uh, a healthy rate of visits, but uh, I wouldn't say that it's a large number. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's perhaps an indication of, uh, again, the potential f for growth. And uh, I would certainly like to see uh, an increased interchange and, and you know, the number and quality of, of sort of missions that are focused on growing the commercial relationship. I think that would be a, a very good thing for both countries. I do know that a lot of Nigerians go outside there to Australia, especially for study purposes, mm -hmm. isn't it? We do have a lot of Nigerian students there. Do we yeah. have a number now? Yes, we do. In fact, um, it's one of the uh, interesting stories over the last sort of five or six years. That number has, has really grown considerably. And uh, we're looking, I think, at around three and a half thousand. Mm. So it's grown from the, because the last data I have is 2,000 yeah. students. But Nigerian even a students. few years ago, that number was quite low mm. um, in the hundreds. So it's gr grown considerably. And I think, you know, that's a reflection of the quality product, education product that is on offer in Australia. Uh, your viewers may be interested to know that Australia is actually the country that hosts the third highest number of international students of any country in the world. So that's significant for, uh, for us and our education sector. Uh, it uh, is a reflection of the quality that's on offer there, some of the world's top universities and research institutions that uh, attract students from around the world, including from Nigeria and from, from uh, across Africa. Uh, we see that as a great thing. Not only uh, does that help uh, you know, build our education sector, but it also means that Australians have the opportunity to get to know this part of the world and Nigeria through the Nigerians that they meet, so uh, studying in Australia. So uh, every student is in their own way a, a mini ambassador. And it's, it's all about growing those people-to-people -people links um, right from that academic base through to, uh, to business or, or wherever those students' careers take them. So uh, we see plenty of value in Promoting the people-to-people -people links, uh, including perhaps through diaspora communities as well, who often have very strong links back to Nigeria and are able to make those uh, commercial connections more easily. Or, and so we see, we see great value in that um, uh, for, uh, for our country, but also obviously that benefits Nigeria as well, ultimately. I, I know that a lot of Nigerians are interested, interested especially in, edu in the educational part. Mm. Uh, does Australia conduct this kind of scholarship schemes for uh, Nigeria? Yeah, we do. We okay. have a program called Australia Awards Africa. Oh, okay. um, so people can Google that and have a look. And uh, we have, uh, I think since about 2010, about th over 300 uh, scholarships at master's level, also short courses, awards and fellowships that are targeted at uh, developing skills in particular priority areas for, for Nigeria. So it's part of a global program that we offer through our uh, development uh, program. And uh, it's one that we're really, really proud of because as I touched on a minute ago, it's not just about the, the content of the study or the education or, the, or the, the piece of paper at the end of it. It's about the relationships that can be uh, developed sometimes decades into the mm -hmm. future, those linkages remain. So. Uh, People will always remember their the university uh, experiences wherever they happen to have them. And uh, we've found it a really important way, a really valuable way for us to connect uh, with our friends and, and partners uh, around the world. So for a country like Australia as uh, being you know, relatively isolated down in the Southern Hemisphere, reaching out uh, has been always been part of our DNA. Uh, that's what we do as Australians. We we know what we, we have a whole continent to mm -hmm. ourselves. 
and so our friends have to be um, made over large distances. Mm. So for us, it comes naturally, um, and you know the scholarships program and our broader uh, approach to diplomacy is is part of that. It's about reaching out and making sure that uh, we can connect with people regardless of the distance, because very often we find. Uh, that once we do that, the amount of common ground is, is enormous mm. and uh, the potential for, for development is r ready. Now, Nigeria's challenge, especially the security situation, like I said also during my intro, Australia has the 13th largest military expenditure mm. uh, in the world. Are, they, uh, are we sharing experiences uh, fighting terrorism? How is Australia helping Nigeria to do that? Well, I think uh, what I'd say on that point, Nancy, is that Australia has been a very active contributor and participant in global efforts to counter terrorism, terrorism. and violent, violent extremism. Um, obviously, our, our reach is, is limited. We're, we're still a relatively small country far away, so we can't be, be everywhere. And obviously, our region is, the Indo-Pacific region is our, is our focus because that's our neighbourhood. Uh, but certainly that those uh, international dialogues uh, that, that are taking place, uh, we are actively participating in all of those uh, because we all know that um, those threats uh, do not respect yeah. borders yeah. and uh, every country has a responsibility to ensure that cooperation is, is, uh, is strong uh, and that we do what we can to assist where that's sensible um, by whatever means uh, is most uh, appropriate. So certainly, yes, uh, we are very active international participants in that uh, effort. Okay. Let's take a few comments on Twitter. Our, f our followers, Dele Jack Solomon is saying, the trade and investment relationship between Nigeria and Australia will afford us the opportunity to diversify the economy in a way that ensures that Nigerians benefit from this relationship. Certainly, the investors will benefit as well, making a win-win situation for both. Thank you, Daly, for that comment. Francis says, uh, I pray that Nigerian governments will emulate Australia's leadership transparency and put things right for the citizens of Nigeria. Okay. Uh, uh, Major B is saying, beyond mining and agriculture, uh, Australian firms have strong reputations in ICT, education, logistics and transport, health and financial services, among many other sectors. Let the federal government take advantage of this positive opportunity for the general well-being of Nigerians. All right, that's it. Uh, okay, uh, Owunibi says, can your guests share more light on Australia's skilled independent visa 189? <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid I am not a visa expert, uh, expert. Uh, but uh, you know, we, as a general comment, um, Australia is a, is a nation of, uh, which draws its community from nations all around the world. In fact, um, about uh, half of our population was either born overseas yeah. or had at least one parent yeah, born overseas. Yeah. So uh, we're, uh, we're an immigrant nation uh, and we have a robust um, program for, for visas and visitors, which is all available uh, information online. But I just wanted to pick up on a comment that uh, one of your viewers uh, put to you on Twitter and just about what are the sorts of mechanisms we can used to deepen the commercial relationship and uh, in preparing for this interview I was reminded of uh, we had a, a Senate inquiry in our, in our Federal Senate in Australia last year from our uh, Foreign Affairs, Defence and, and Trade Committee um, on how we can deepen our trade and investment relationships with, with Africa in general. So it was very pleasing for me to be able to uh, contribute to that uh, through um, a submission from the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade on what are the opportunities, what are the barriers and the blockages and what can we in Australia do uh, to, to reduce some of those to take advantage of the potential. So just a signal to say that even at that sort of uh, parliamentary level there is considerable thinking going into what, what can be done in the future to, to build on what we have now. Uh, in so Your Excellency, just uh, the last question. How long have you been here in Nigeria? I've been here almost three and a half years. So, What do you enjoy most about the uh, Look, the thing that I enjoy most about Nigeria is, is meeting Nigerians. There's, there's no two ways about that. It's uh, a terrific uh, 
experience for, for me to have um, been able to travel around part, different parts of the country, meet Nigerians from all walks of life and with, uh, without exception everywhere I go I'm greeted almost as a member <laughs> of the family, uh, which is a terrific thing. Mm. I think it's a great national asset that yeah. this country has. How about our food? Well, of course. <laughs> so I've become uh, quite a fan of... Uh, not tell me jollof rice. I, I was oh, you've took the words right <laughs> out of my mouth. <laughs> Our famous <laughs> That's rice. right. I'm, uh, I've already been making inquiries because I'll be heading back to Australia quite soon. And I've already been making inquiries about where we can uh, obtain jollof rice in Australia. That's and I'm true. reliably informed that good jollof rice is available now. Wow. So there you go. I will not have to suffer. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. So many thanks for joining me on today's show. Thank you very much. Thanks very coming. much, Nancy. Thank you. All right, I've been uh, speaking with Paul Lehman, the Australian High Commissioner to Nigeria. We've been looking at the business opportunities, trade relationship, commercial relationship between Nigeria as the largest economy in Africa and Australia, which happens to also be a continent filled with a lot of good things. All right, that's the much we can take on today's edition of the program. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your comments and opinions on uh, social media. Please join us again tomorrow for another interesting package. Be the best you can be, be the change that you want to see. I am Nancy Naji. Bye now. <laughs>